Hey, what's up everybody? I'm here with Otis, uh, the owner of Dirty River Bicycle Works, a bike shop that's been open in downtown Akron for about six years. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like the culture of your bike shop and stuff like that. But to start off with, I was curious, like, you know, we're obviously friends, but we didn't, we only knew each other a little bit before you opened. We are? Yeah. <laughs> well, oh. I thought we were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, YouTube famous. <laughs> yeah, I but I was kind of curious as like, because it's something I've actually never asked you is like, why did you decide to open up a bike shop? Oh, uh, good question. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it was, it, it wasn't the plan. Like I'm, I'm much better as like a, a, a second person or like a, a domestique, uh, <laughs> stuff like that, like a helper bee. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't like a plan. It, it it was kind of an opportunity, where like I I tried I went to a lot of school, and it I got crappy degrees that were esoteric and paid no money, and I got lots of debt, and and then I tried some other careers, and and uh, but I always did bikes through the whole thing, and it was kind of my favorite thing because it's like a little bit of science. A lot of mechanical thing. It's people. It's sport. Um, it, it, there's a lot, a lot of sides to it. So that 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 really intrigued me, and and I just kept learning, and I got better and better at fixing it. And then I also like, uh, I was a teacher, and and learned some counseling stuff. So I, I diagnosis and and explaining things I was pretty good at, mm. and so. So it just kind of like like a natural it, progression. Yeah, almost. yeah. It was so you were like like I, I you were a mechanic in other bike shops. Yeah, for, right, yeah. Multiple for, other bike shops. Right. When I started it for over fifteen years, yeah, mm -hmm. I was did triathlon bikes, racing bikes, uh, mountain bikes, all kind like touring bikes, built wheels, all kinds of things. Uh, so it. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah. Cheers. Okay. Yeah, so one of the things that I've noticed here is like, you know, we're kind of lucky in I think Northeast Ohio in general, but there, there are other bike shops around that are, that are decent and that I went to and that were fine. But <laughs> I never like actually ever like hung out at a bike shop. Like there was never like, it was never the meeting point. It was never like a place where you just went in to also chat and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and I felt like, like the whole point, like the kind of the gist of this video in general is the idea that I feel like this bike shop has really created a different cycling culture and community in the Akron area. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of wondering, like when you were thinking of opening a bike shop, was was that part of the intention? Like, or was it just a business plan? Or were you also thinking, I want a bike shop that's a community focal point? I, I didn't plan to be a community focal point. I mean, I planned to, to just fix bikes really well. And listen to people, you know, instead of instead of like s just selling stuff like I wanted to listen to people and give them good advice. But also in, in that, like I, that's that's people focused mm. and like, you know, we, we, we've got a whole bunch of metal and rubber here, but all that matters is people. Like if people want something cool, we got cool stuff. You know, if people want to go far, oh. This is stuff that'll make you go far or fast or whatever. It's it, it's about people. And then uh, we started some group rides, and like my mom was a super welcoming person, and so she taught me how to be welcoming. And so we started. We called it Dirty Ladies Ride on Sunday, and it was a ridiculous name. And and we had ten to twenty uh, women. I'm not in charge. You guys are riding. I'm here to fix a flat if we need to. And then like they just start making jokes with me and, and chatting and like we just had this great time and we'd start going on different little routes and stuff. And it went great. And 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 they just felt like they still come to rides and they're come to all the Akron bike parties and like they're really serious riders. But uh, that was kind of the little nexus of like, oh hey, like, you know, you just have a bike ride that Anybody can show up and feel welcome and, and, and do some things. And then we started Yeti Squad. Yeah, and Yeti Squad is like, 
really kind of a fascinating story because you started like a, again like this on Sunday mornings, what ten o'clock meetup time here, and it's a little bit of everything, but it's not overly. It's it's a way to ride. It's it's chill. I, I want to say it's a social event as much as it is a bike ride. And I don't know if it started that way, but it's like when I go there, I know I'm going to more hang out. Like we're going to do some cool stuff, but I'm going there to talk to people. And it's amazing, like the way this has grown, and it's made like spinoffs of people who you know may just be beginners, and then they find like their little bike tribe, and they also they always come to Yeti Squad, but then they might have their own thing, like up at the mountain bike park at Rays, or mm -hmm. mountain biking, or mm -hmm. gravel riding, or even some people who are into racing but still come to do this chill hangout ride every single week. Right before I worked at the shop, I worked at a school and they went outside every day. And it was kind of a hippie school and they're amazing and, and just like little kids throwing on snow pants and like rubber boots and just going out in the mud and the slush and the rain and whatever and just playing on the playground every day. And I was like, this is pretty cool because like I had to hang out with them. So I had to get the stuff and learn how mm -hmm. to do it. And then I started riding my bike with my rubber boots and my, you know, car hearts or whatever, and and uh, uh, just getting out there. And, and I was like, well, uh, I'm here, I have a bike shop, and, and winter is when everybody just twiddles their thumbs and looks at YouTube all winter. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I'm not good at twiddling my thumbs. Let's just get some bike rides going. The guy who did our logo made all these like Sasquatch themed things. I was like, okay, each season's named on a different Sasquatch. So let's let's do Yeti Squad for winter, hmm. and and so we started it, and I gave out prizes, and like whoever did the dumbest things was the Mad Yeti, and uh, uh, yeah, all the stuff like that. And but we just started doing it, and then I learned about stud tires and layering and wool, and and like you know we have real winter sometimes here, yeah. and so <laughs> so. It, it, it's a lot of it is just being adaptable and like having a bag with with something like you've done you know you have yeah. a flat tire you have a coat in your bag that you put on so you don't yeah, freeze, freeze yourself yeah what you're doing okay. but we just we just did micro adventures like just you know we we ride you know when it's super cold and nasty we ride five miles and then we get brunch yeah it's not it's not you know if if it's nice we go 15 20 miles and we stop and chat like this Sunday People were like, hey, you need to stop more. We want to take pictures in front of this cool graffiti. Yeah. Like, quit going on ahead. We, we're doing yeah. that. And it's like, and it is, like, it, it has a mind of its own. It, it, it's very much like people want to hang out and talk about bikes and then it's, I have saying, lunch. From, from out of this, and I, I totally think, like, this didn't happen. I didn't ride in the winter, too. This was a big catalyst for me riding through the winter as well, which I really missed. Oh, add it all. You, you, you said, you guys are insane. Yeah. I'm not showing up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and now then, you ride more than me in the winter. <laughs> yeah, well that's what, that's what I was really thinking of when I was thinking of the idea to make a video about like what has come out of this bike shop is mid-January, I'm out riding my bike and I, I'm riding down the towpath, the trail that runs right through downtown Akron, and I waved to two people I know, two of them that I know from the bike shop that I didn't know previously, and then I run into an old friend who um, you fixed up his bikes and built his bikes for him. And we start talking and then I'm like, well, I was just out for which way you're heading. And just I'm riding with him and having a conversation. And this is January. Like this was not happening around here before. You know, that was not a thing. I'm not saying no one was riding their bikes in the winter, but I was not, even when I first started, like maybe Sunday morning, but I wasn't getting out there and running into people I knew out on bikes in the winter. Yeah, and that, and that that's kind of happened on accident. We came to downtown Akron because there's so many people here and there's so many trails that connect and, and, and streets and all that, like there's so many places to ride. And then we found all the abandoned spots that are even better. We call it exploring. It's so easy to bike here and out. We kind of connect, like there'll be road bikers who come through on, on the Freedom Trail or the bike and hike and, mm. or Main Street or whatever. And then there's people like fat biking and creepy woods trails and stuff or whatever. And it just kind of like, you just keep running into people. In downtown, like meeting you and meeting Ben and then Aaron and Bronwyn and Albert and just kept meeting more downtown people. And it kind of became a little neighborhood that everybody started doing a little bit of bikes. Mm -hmm. And like we had these bike rides where everyone's welcome 
Uh, it's about making friends and riding bikes. And, and then people found their little crew. And there's people like going and doing a 200 mile gravel ride. There's you guys, you know, bike camping 10, 15 weekends a, a summer. There's uh, people going up to raise and do jumps. Yeah. Or, or whatever, like there's all these little things. People make their own routes out of it and make their own friends. Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking about that too. It's like, you know, I, I had a little crew that I've been riding with like previous to the shop, but now when that's broadened as well, but if it's like a Saturday and I talk to people about, you know, we're gonna do a ride today and we're like chatting in some Instagram chat group or whatever, and it's just like, everyone just says, we'll meet at the shop. You know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. the central focal point, you know? And I know all the other little groups that also sprung out of the Yeti Squad kind of do the same thing, different people. So I walk in and then I'm talking to a bunch of other people. It's like, what are you guys riding today? What are you guys riding today? Yeah. And just a whole, and I, was, and I think one thing is, and it's probably- It's because it's about people. Yeah, and I think it, it does relate to what you do sell here and what you stock here is, you know, there are some shops that are solely race oriented and you know, you're a mechanic who could work on any kind of bike. But you know, you walk in some other shops, and I learned this from doing YouTube and doing the live streams, because I'm always like, oh, get it from your local bike shop. And they're like, I don't like my local bike shop. Hmm. And I didn't realize that. And like some people are like, where can I get this online? I'm like, well, I'd, you know, if you could support a local bike shop, and they're like, I don't like it. I didn't realize that, you know, and there's nothing wrong like with race or roadie culture. Like I'm always saying in these videos, I'm a huge fan of racing. But when you walk into a bike shop and people are standing there in spandex and clipless shoes and only talking about FTP and GCN. It's intimidating. So I think, you know, whether it was intentional or not, like the kind of stuff you stock and the kind of bikes you have, and like you said, it being about people, I think there's a lot of people who walk in here and feel like it's way more welcoming in this way when people are talking about cuts and group bike rides and friends. And Yeah, and, and, that, and that, that kind of thing I, I, I learned from Grant Peterson of Rivendell. Like it's, it's about getting on a bike with clothes and, and going places. And then there, there I, I've a lot of authors about city biking and things like that. Just you're gonna ride more if your bike can be regular clothes and, and normal shoes. There's totally a case for awesome elite bikes and doing just pushing boundaries of what humans can do on a vehicle um, under their own power. That's awesome. Having, having a bike that's almost as fast as that, that can carry stuff and you can wear regular clothes and go places, I think it's better. Yeah, and, it, and, and I and, think it's and, a lower and, barrier of entry to your normal yeah. person too. Like, I, I think there's a lot of people who only have seen it through that, or if that's what their local shop is like, they're like, well, I don't want to make that jump to a Pinarello and a whole new outfit. Like, that's... <laughs> That's a high barrier to entry to something that should have the lowest barrier of entry, you know, mm -hmm. a functional bicycle, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and we kind of, like, when we sell bikes, it's like, you, you want a bike pump, you might want a helmet. We recommend helmets. A few friends are here because of helmets, but. Yeah. Uh, I uh, never wore one before And then we eventually, together, eventually bike did. lube, you know, yeah. like that's, that's, that's not, a, that's not a big entry. So, yeah. so that, and that, and like we, we kind of, we sell simple bikes and then you pick your tire size depending on what train you want to ride on. I like to ride on really big, dumb things and, and challenge myself making trails. So I ride a lot of fat bikes, and I, I, but I ride really fast fat bikes. <laughs> uh, uh, so, but, uh, uh, but then, but also like- That's an oxymoron, my, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, that wasn't a fist bump, that was a pinch. Oh. Uh, that was a pinch. Uh, but then like my, my, my wife, I, I tried to get her into mountain biking for a long time and then she got a fat bike and cause it's stable, like now she just rides on anything. And it's not like she's trying to jump, but she loves riding off road and she has these giant tires. And so she can just roll over things and, and not crash. I'm like you, I'm a giant nerd. Like I'll, I will talk about every single piece on a bicycle to the end of the world mm. about little nuances and what I prefer and what's better, or what's faster or st sturdier. Like, that's awesome. But does it matter? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't. It's about helping people find something where they can make friends, do cool things, and, and make their body feel good. Yeah, that's, that's so cool to see, too, because even as we watch people who just get one bike, like you said, a simple bike, it could be, you know, 
what you know used to be a hybrid, now might even be called like a cheaper gravel bike, doesn't matter. But then they start riding that bike and then they start upgrading that bike. And then they're like, oh, now I need a bike to do this. Or it doesn't matter what direction they head either. You know, like we have friends like Nicole have gone down like She's really getting into mountain biking and becoming awesome at it. She was explaining to me how to bunny hop when we She's were. She's also up. a gravel badass. Yeah, as a gravel badass too. But explaining, teaching me how to bunny hop when we're sitting there having a beer, explaining the process because I'm so bad at it. I can't, well, I literally can't get the back wheel off the ground. And she's like explaining like the hip motion and everything to me, like, you know, in a couple of years gone way advanced, like skills wise, past what I could do. Then our other friends who have, do, might go down a racy path, but since they started in this atmosphere, also when they come in here, like, can have a normal conversation with everybody who just rides whatever, but then if you want to talk about that kind of stuff, you can as well. You know, it's just makes for a really broad spectrum and a great community that's not broy, which is the best thing about it. You know, to me. So Yeti, Yeti Squad's become kind of the core of the shop, and it's just, you know, as long as there's not overt lightning or like a tornado, like we're gonna show up and we're gonna go somewhere, mm. and and and. Like it's different every week, and and uh, if just people who are really hardcore, we'll go do some weird, deep mud, snow, ice, big hills, whatever. We'll go do that. If if it's people, every like you bring your like this week on Sunday, we're doing bring a boo to Yeti, and so it's like we have just the super. Oh, bring a boo. Bring yeah. a boo. Yeah, gotcha. Bring your boo. <laughs> I was like, yeah, bring your boots. It's going to be yeah, cold. Yeah, so bring your friend, <laughs> Anyways, bring, bring your friend, friend yeah. bring bring your other or something. We have a nice, simple course. We're going to have mimosas out in the wilderness. Nice. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, very classy, very classy. <laughs> in winter, you just shut it off and you hid inside. And and then once the sun came out, you did stuff again, Yeah. which is weird because we're in this little weird spot where winter sports are like... In Peninsula, they're skiing yeah. sometimes, uh, but winter sports are, are not a thing here. And like, like you can run in the mud, but biking's pretty freaking awesome as a winter sport. And you, you have some fenders, maybe some stud tires, and you can ride every single day no matter what. Like we just show up on Sundays and like, oh, this year's the weather, let's pick something that fits. Yeah, I did one last year, like, and it was a blizzard. <laughs> And like halfway, we were driving here. I usually ride my bike here, but I loaded up the bikes. And like halfway driving here, we like, we shouldn't be in our car right now. And then we went and rode bikes. Yeah, <laughs> you know? like, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And and like you have more options, and you can like you 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 are an example of it. Like you just you figure out your clothes. Like yeah. everybody's different. Like I'm cold all the time, so I wear more clothes than anyone else. I'm like wool everywhere. Give me the wool. I will wear it. And I will be warm, and I'll sweat, and I'll be yeah. okay, and I won't die. That's that's me. And then some people are like, give me a base layer and a windbreaker, and yeah. the biggest gloves that have ever been invented. Let's do this. Yeah. And it just you just figure it out because everybody's different. And that's like the other thing is like you know not being being a, a selling oriented shop. It's a people oriented shop. Like. I can say, oh, this is the best thing ever. And you're like, I wear flip flops in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you trying to sell me these giant giant boots yeah. or gloves? Like, no, it doesn't make sense. And we have those people. Yeah, oh, we do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no pants I kneel. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I think right. that, I, and I mean, you don't need to say this, and I, I don't even <laughs> think it's the intention, but it's true. Like, I remember talking to other bike shops about the winter and selling winter clothes. They're like, oh, we don't stock those, we don't sell it. Building community is good business. Like, you don't do it like we've been talking about. You're not doing it for that reason, but it is good business, you know, being a welcoming shop. But then also, like, yeah, you're a shop that can sell winter gear and winter clothes because you host winter rides and you've turned people into winter cyclists, myself included. We were just trying things and trying things and like, ah, this this wasn't that great. And like, you can just go ride in, in clothes you have in your house, mm -hmm. like yeah. for a really long time. But then when you start wanting to ride before those clothes are dry, then you start looking at fan like more specific things. So yeah, I again, I one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is I just think like, in my life, this shop has been really important, but to, and oh, I was babe. all, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I, you know, I was already riding and I was always going to ride most of the time. Maybe winter would have found, I would have gotten into that eventually, maybe not. 
but to watch the way it's changed the community and the cycling culture around here and how many people have just gone down the bike road and how awesome that is. But so I guess I get a lot of comments on the channel about people who like, man, I wish we had a bike culture like that. I wish I had friends like yours. And I was just wondering if, is there any advice or like people don't feel like they have that is, or like the shop isn't like that. Would you have any advice or what would you say when someone says that? Or? Well, I mean, you can start things, but the real bike shop or a good bike shop is, is friendly and resourceful. Just you find people that, that are friendly and resourceful and then uh, just start doing some things and don't do big things. Like if you have goals for big things, that's fine. But have goals, it's more fun to do big things when you have friends. Yeah. And so, so uh, uh, do, do little things and consistent little things. And, and it's actually more healthy to do consistent little things than it is to do giant big things. Do things that, are, that, that don't exclude people. Do things that people feel welcome. You know? I think that's what you're saying. If you start it's, small, even like you're saying Yeti Squad, like it's a low barrier to entry ride. Everybody is welcome. <laughs> but then that's what leads to other things. So I think for a lot of people who don't have a community and talk about not having a community, you know, sometimes you have to be the one that maybe who puts yeah. it out there, you know. And community have, can be two people. Yeah. It can be two people. And, 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 you know, and then if someone's like, oh, wow, that's cool. And like, hey, come with us. Yeah. And then don't leave them in the wilderness. <laughs> and, and, and tell them Google how to get home. Yeah. You know, like the, that kind of things. And, and yeah, I'll, I'll send you my Yeti Squad rules. They're pretty ridiculous, but it's a basic yeah. thing of, of, of. Yeah, you do a little speech at the beginning that is yeah, very. Is. Everything is optional, nothing is recommended. To make choices as an adult, or make choices that the adult with you will not throw you into the canal for. <laughs> because uh, we're here to ride bikes to make friends, which is rule number two, don't be a dick. Show up, let's do stuff, and be nice to each other. Yeah. And yeah. And don't blame someone if you go driving off of a small embankment into a canal. <laughs> Yeah. All right, let's leave it with the, uh, <laughs> the with, heater kicked with on. With a random person yeah, the in a canal. Yeah, the compressor kicked on. Yeah. So it's noisy and A free air at Dirty River Bike Shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even say my own bike shop right. Dirty oh, yeah, River it? Bicycle Works. Dirty River Bicycle Works. Wow. Cut that. Or not. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs>